23rd meeting of Mayor City Council come to order. If you wish to be heard at this meeting, please sign the speaker list provided on the table at the side of the council chamber to my left. I reserve the right to limit the amount of each speaker, the time each speaker has for each agenda item. Uh, President Smalls will not be with us tonight. He's attending to a personal matter. Will all rise for the invocation by Reverend Warren H. Litchfield. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by the Mayor. Join me in a moment of prayer. Almighty God, we gather this evening now to conduct the business of this city. We offer a prayer for our Mayor, for the President, for the members of the City Council, and all on authority. Granted to them a sense of justice, strength, and wisdom as they perform their duty on behalf of thy people as we commend this city, county, state, and nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy divine providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. We especially commend your gracious care in keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad, the law enforcement community, and fire and rescue. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace, strengthen them in their trials and temptations, give them courage to face the problem and set them, and grant them each a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Remember those upon a bed of affliction, come with those who mourn. Hear our prayer in thy name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Agenda item number four, call roll, Ms. Brown. Mr. Rex? Here. Ms. Query? Here. Ms. Nicholas? Here. Here. President Pro Tem Laz? Here. Mayor Mao? Here. Thank you, Ms. Rao. Moved agenda item number five, approval of minutes of the 22nd meeting of Monday, December 10th, 2012. What's the pleasure of the council? Move to approve. Thank you, Ms. Second. Thank you. Call roll, Ms. Rao. Ms. Crary? Yes. Mr. Ricks? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. President Laz? Yes. Okay, we're going to have now a PowerPoint presentation on Plan Prince George's 2035. Sure. Thank you. Stop. <coughs> we need to kill some lights, Mayor. I doubt it. Kill some lights. And that's all. Uh, think it's all right? I'm, I don't know how you can see it. Is it all right out there? Okay. Go ahead, sir. State your name and address for the record, and uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Keir McCune. I'm with the Prince George's County Planning Department, and I am the project manager for the county's new general plan. Uh, we are in the pre-planning phase of developing um, this new plan, which we've entitled Plan Prince George's 2035, and it's an update. It's an update to the county's current general plan, which was uh, developed in, and um, approved in 2002. Uh, I know you have a, a tight agenda, so I'm going to try to be brief, but get to the points and respect your time. Um, but I want to thank you very much for um, allowing me to, to speak um, on this very exciting project. Uh, I have two main goals uh, for today's briefing. Uh, the first is to inform you about this new initiative, and the second is to ask you to partner with us as we develop this plan. Um, and go through the process. Um, before I go too far, um, one of the things that I, that I gave you is um, it's, a, it's a thumb drive. And this thumb drive, when you open it up, um, when you get home tonight or tomorrow, uh, it has all the information about the project, or our um, um, demographic information from the county, our contact information, as well as our links to our, our website, as well as our Twitter page. Um, what I'd like to cover today is uh, general background about the project, um, why we're updating the plan, um, some of the general topics that we'll cover, and then our goals and our schedule. So what is a general plan? 
Uh, the first thing to remember is that this is a, essentially it's a land use document. Uh oh, did I just ruin this? Little there we go. Um, it's really it's a blueprint for the physical development of Prince George's County. It includes a, a long-term vision, and this vision for this project is a 20-year vision, but it also is important to, to note that it includes short-term as well as long-term goals. It establishes uh, broad goals, and as a general plan, um, it does that because we have our master plans and sector plans are those vehicles that we use to get more down to the, the specific parcel level or, or, or intersection level for, um, for, for recommendations. It identifies priorities for growth, where we want to see growth in the county, um, as well as areas that we want to protect from development. And it includes specific strategies to implement the plan. So why are we updating a general plan? Uh, state of law, the uh, state of Maryland requires that uh, we evaluate our general plan two years after each decennial census. Um, but we want to go a little bit beyond just the evaluation. Um, a lot has changed in the country in Prince George's County in the last 10 years in terms of demographics and the economy. And this is really an opportunity for us to respond uh, to many of those issues. Uh, this, this plan is not going to be developed um, in a vacuum. And we already have um, some initial guidance on big picture items um, coming from our county executive and our county council. Um, and three of the major things that we've heard in our initial meetings with the district council as well as our county executive's office is um, economic development, diversifying our county's tax base, um, transit-oriented development, as well as education. But we also have guidance from the state, regional, um, county, as well as uh, municipal level um, in terms of uh, guidance for this project. Uh, first, we have Plan Maryland, which uh, gives guidance on, on state policies. Uh, Region Forward, which is a, it's a COG initiative um, with planning guidance that reflects a vision for the greater Washington area. And then Envision Prince George's, which was an enormous outreach effort. Um, it was a 20-month effort. Uh, it engaged more than 20,000 residents in Prince George's County. And essentially, it was the outreach uh, program that we would have done for this, but they did it before us, and it asked them to, um, to consider everything from education to entertainment to public safety uh, to business development. It's a really good uh, starting point for us to build off of in terms of, of outreach. And then we have our recently completed master plans, our sector plans, as well as our functional plans. And those functional plans are um, documents that really get to specific elements, such as our public safety, um, historic preservation, as well as our, our parks functional plan that is wrapping up right now, the Formula 2040 plan. So all of those put together give us a really good starting point in terms of um, the elements that we should focus on. And, and it also included a lot of outreach to the, to, the, to the county. These are hundreds of meetings, millions of dollars spent, and we really want to utilize what we've heard in those um, processes. Uh, the proposed structure of the plan. This isn't so much a, a proposed structure, but just an overview of the topics that we um, will cover in the general plan. Um, and keeping in mind that all these topics are related to land use and how land use um, can affect these different topics. So the first one's development patterns. Um, looking at our, our development tiers, the county's broken up into three different development tiers, uh, developing, uh, developed, and, um, and rural. And each one of those has a specific goal in terms of the type of development and the amount and intensity of de development for each of those. We'll also look at the design of spaces for our rural areas, suburban areas, as well as our, um, our, our urban areas, and really trying to, um, particularly in our, in our rural areas, maintain that rural character. Um, an element that we see in, in all our plants is infrastructure. Um, this is very typical, um, looking at uh, environmental inf infrastructure, um, stormwater management, uh, water quality, air quality, things of that nature, and then transportation, our roads, our, our trains, our sidewalks, um, and then public facilities gets into our schools, our libraries, um, fire stations, and things of that nature. Um, economic development we see as really being a cornerstone for this plan in terms of these are topics that always came to the top whenever we met with someone. Um, looking at business development, uh, retaining businesses, drawing new businesses in, um, and really, as I mentioned before, trying to diversify the county's tax base. And then looking at housing, as our demographics change, our housing needs are changing. Um, the focus of the 2002 plan was really to, to create um, 
uh, state housing, a lot of single family detached housing, and that trend has changed. And we have a lot of stock um, that's available. A lot of them have been in foreclosure, but we need to look at now what are our new housing demands going to be for the future, and also where should they be located. And the community character quality of life is a topic that isn't, hasn't been traditionally looked at in our master plans and sector plans, but they're really important for us to do in the future and, and make this um, something we do on a consistent basis. And particularly when we look at uh, health and food, um, recognizing that the built environment definitely has an effect on the health of our residents and, the, um, and, and food, when we look at food, using land use practices to make sure that all our residents have equal access to healthy and nutritious foods. Um, we'll also be looking at public safety, historic preservation, as well as cultural arts. So our community engagement, um, as I mentioned, we're going to build off of what we've already done and spent money and uh, engage the, the public with in terms of Envision, our master plan and sector plans. Uh, we have a project website, Plan PGC 2035. You put that into your, uh, your browser, it'll bring up our Twitter page or bring up our website and our Facebook page. Um, our website has um, a ton of information that we're updating um, several times a week. Our project schedule, the meetings that we've had, summaries of our meetings, um, demographic information, maps, and you can make comments on there as well. Uh, we also have a Facebook page, so we encourage you to like us on Facebook. Uh, we have a very active Twitter page. Um, uh, whenever we go to meetings, there's someone, uh, I think the term is tweeting, about uh, what's going on, uh, whether it's one of our meetings or a, a district council meeting or a planning board meeting, and just really disseminate information that is relevant to planning. Uh, scenario planning is a, is a new tool that we are developing that will be on our website, and it's a GIS-based tool. And what that does is it allows you to kind of personalize what your preferences are for the county, whether um, it's walkability, um, commute times. And what that does is once you've ranked all of these, it, it shows you a map of how the county will grow based on what your priorities are. And then, of course, we will continue with our, our community meetings on our stakeholder briefings. And right now what we're working on are some um, topic-specific forums that will be open to the entire county. And this will be on topics such as where and how we grow, um, housing, uh, natural resources, as well as community health. So our major goals for this project are to establish a clear long-term vision for Prince George's County. We thought that was really lacking in the 2002 plan, a clear vision of where we want to go as a county. Um, again, I'm reiterating this, build upon our previous planning efforts. Um, and then something I think that we have lacked in and we can really do a better job it with is um, better coordinating and having partnerships with our municipalities. Um, these, you know, these groups are something that we need to do a better job with because you have a lot of good information that we want to make sure that we have your vision in this project as well, um, as well as our county agencies. These are the agencies that are actually going to implement the project uh, when, it's, uh, when it's done. They want to formulate a realistic implementation strategy. And what this means is that we need to um, uh, be very cognizant of the cost of the things that we're um, recommending, as well as who's responsible for those. And then a clear measurable metric for success. Um, we want to be able to use this plan to, to track progress. And then later on, we can verify our performance. So currently what we're working on in, the, in this pre-planning stage is we've developed um, an analysis of the 2002 plan um, as a starting point, looking at its strengths and weaknesses. And again, that's available on the, um, the thumb drive I provided to you, as well as the, um, the web page. Um, again, we're briefing our stakeholders, our municipalities. Uh, we have uh, regular briefings with our planning board and we're working with the county executive staff. Um, we're also developing a series of policy papers to help guide us. Um, papers on community health, housing, where and how we grow. Um, some of these papers have been completed and we've briefed the planning board on those. Um, and again, those are available on our website. You can get the PowerPoint, you can actually get the paper, and you can actually watch the uh, presentation as we gave it um, to the planning board. And there's a couple more uh, prioritization of centers and where and how we grow are coming up within the next couple of months. So our project schedule, as I mentioned, we're still officially in the pre-planning stages. Um, in November, the planning board approved our initiation package. So what that means is they've uh, transmitted that to the district council, 
and now it's um, their turn uh, to act on it and uh, they're scheduled to act on that on January 22nd uh, which means that will be the official start time for the project um, and if everything goes according to schedule we will seek permission to print the preliminary plan in September of 2013 uh, we'll have a joint public hearing in November and then final plan approval is scheduled for March of 2014 so again um, plan PGC 2035 uh, we're on Twitter. Uh, please follow us on Twitter. And we, s we ask you to spread the word to make sure that um, the residents of the city of Laurel have an opportunity to get involved. This is not the last time I'll be up here. It's really the first time since we're in the pre-planning stage. Um, so I encourage you to follow us, um, disseminate as much information and the word as you can, because we want to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to, um, to get involved. Um, and with that, I am more than happy to answer any questions you have and try to fly through that so we can get on to your other business. <laughs> Let me open up with just one question. Uh, sure. Uh, are you going to brief the Planning Commission, our City of Laurel Planning Commission? Carl, is that planned? It hasn't been scheduled, but I'm sure we can work it in Mr. McKinney's yeah, schedule. It, it might be beneficial to have a uh, maybe a joint meeting of the Planning Commission and Board of Appeals so that they can uh, hear what you have to say. I think that would be very important. Absolutely. And we were thinking, you know, once we start to, once we finish our policy papers, it might be nice to give them something to react to. Right. I'm um, right. develop it. So absolutely. All right. Do any of my colleagues have any questions? Mr. Ricks. No question. Thank Great. you. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sure we'll see you again. My pleasure. I'm sorry. Excuse me, Mayor. No, my, my, my. Apologize. <coughs> no, I just <coughs> okay. We'll move to uh, number seven. I'm number six, uh, report of the Mayor and City Council, and I'll start with uh, Ms. Curry. Thank you, Mr. Eliza. Uh, December 18th, I, returned, I attended the uh, first responders dinner here in town. It's an enjoyable event. And also on the 18th, I attended a library meeting, which is moving along quite nicely in the plans. And there's some glitches, but we'll get through them. Uh, on the 19th, I attended the Ashford Homeowners Association, and uh, it was very nice. It was different comments, and you never know what's going to come from your constituents, and they raised some concerns and also some praise in areas that we hadn't heard before, and we always welcome praise from the dais. I attended the uh, Bagels with Council along with my colleagues here on the dais and also uh, drop in with the council. Uh, again, speaking to the uh, constituents here in town. And on the uh, January 9th, we all attended the uh, MML opening day of the Maryland Legislature. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Ms. Crary. Ms. Nicholas? Thank you. Um, Laurel Regional Hospital will be offering the free flu shot tomorrow from 2 to 7. So anyone that's interested, please go over and get your flu shot. The second thing I have is on uh, January the 22nd will be our last trap, neuter, and release meeting. And at that meeting afterwards, we will be submitting draft legislation for consideration. The last thing is I, over the weekend, I was able to attend with the Laurel Clergy Association. They have a number of churches that provide housing, provide shelter for a number of the residents here in Laurel. So I was at Bethany Church uh, Friday and Saturday night, and then City of Zion uh, is partnered with Bethany to provide that. There are a lot of um, people that are hurting out here, so I just ask you all to continue to pray. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nicholas. Mr. Ricks? Uh, thank you. Uh, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. I uh, hope it was safe for everyone. Um, mine was very, very nice down in Puerto Rico. And so. Um, I can really appreciate what you all were going through up here. <laughs> um, I also want to recognize the fact that uh, we had bagels with the council a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was a, a very good turnout. We had five constituents that came out and brought up a number of issues that I think uh, we are addressing. Um, I think that uh, for the citizens of the city of Laurel, I think it's, it's, it's fair to say that this is a very comfortable setting for you to sit down and discuss with your council members exactly things that concern you 
on a one-to-one -one basis. It's a very, very nice thing. I think that the people that did participate uh, a week ago, um, I, I'm addressing a number of issues that people were uh, talking about as, as far as trees in the city uh, that are dilapidated and need to be corrected. We have new legislation on the books that deals with some of that. So those are some of the things, uh, the things that we're, we're looking at. I attended the MML um, opening of the legislature. It was very nice, uh, very productive. Met a number of people that I think can uh, help the city and uh, different things that we have coming up. I also had the pleasure of, as a representative from the Department of Parks and Recreation, of uh, judging the Christmas tree lightings. And um, I see Mr. Kloon in the audience and we do miss your tree. And we're hoping that something will happen soon to bring that back. Um, but nevertheless, uh, the Department of Parks and, Parks and Recreation did an excellent job as far as the decorations of what we saw. Um, I want to uh, recognize in the audience a good friend of mine, his name is Brian Cox. Brian, stand up for a second, please. Brian is new to the community, and he's the kind of person that I think the community needs more of. He's stepped up. He's on the Chief's uh, Council, uh, representing the second ward, and he's also joining the Royal Volunteer Fire Department. So I congratulate Brian for being here and uh, doing his duty. He's moved here from Pasadena, Maryland, and I think he's really going to be an, a good asset to our community. So I recognize that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. Um, condolences to the Barkman family on the passing of Mary Barkman. She was a uh, long-term time resident of the city of Laurel and a businesswoman uh, on Barkman's florist on Main Street. Uh, condolences to the Plumley and Lily families on the passing of Carla. Um, that concludes my report. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, several things. Let me uh, give condolences to Jeffrey Alexander with our Park and Recs and the passing of his brother. Also, Mayor Mike Bennett from Aberdeen, the passing of uh, Mike's father, He's a very good friend with the city here. Dwayne Pl Plumley, uh, the uh, passing of his daughter with the Department of Public Works, and uh, Thomas Slater with the Department of Public Works and the passing of his father. And Paul, you please send our best regards to your uh, Park and Recs, or I'm sorry, uh, Public Works uh, officials. Also, you heard uh, the uh, president talk about Mary Barkman and the passing of Mary. We want to wish the very best to her, uh, members of her family and, and remember her in our prayers. Uh, speedy recovery uh, wishes to um, Jan Robinson, former council member Robinson. Also, Jan's birthday today. We want to wish her the very best. Uh, as well as you can see the front table, we're missing uh, Ms. Mills and Ms. Crook. We wish them a speedy recovery as well. Um, today we had the opportunity to have Lieutenant Governor Brown and um, the uh, Acting Secretary of Transportation um, with us here today is uh, at the American Legion Post 60 with the uh, announcement of um, new service that uh, MBA has. You can get the, all of that information off of MBA's website or the Veterans Affairs um, website. Uh, some new legislation went into effect for veterans regarding uh, their tags as well as um, a driver's license and plenty of information on there if you're interested in that and what a nice way to recognize our veterans and what they continue to do and we, we again thank them for all that they do. Let me also thank uh, American Legion Post 60 for hosting that and I was uh, happy to attend and, and uh, again we want to uh, thank the Lieutenant Governor for being here. The uh, congratulations to uh, Mike Les, who was appointed to the National League of Cities uh, Steering Committee for Transportation Infrastructure. I want to thank um, Mike for uh, accepting that and being appointed to that as well by the president of the league. I think that says a lot um, for members of the council when they're uh, appointed to those type of uh, committees. So um, congratulations, Mike. Did have the opportunity to attend the, attend the Sons of Italy um, dinner last week during actually the night of the General Assembly opening. So it was either go to the General Assembly or go to the Sons of Italy, and I went to Sons of Italy. <laughs> <coughs> we actually got more done there. So um, uh, appreciate the invitation being there. Um, all joking aside, you heard uh, the session is in. I'm going to thank Ms. Rao and Ms. Crook for continuing to serve um, the city of law during that 90 days. and. Uh, a lot of times it's, it isn't really uh, what we go down to try to get. It's just protecting what we already have in some cases when the session's in. Um, when my brother was in the, um, well, better not say that. Never mind. <laughs> <coughs> um, 
just a couple of announcements. Uh, City Hall will be closed on um, January the 21st with this Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Day. Um, and look on the website or call Public Works for the trash schedule. The uh, reef laying will, uh, ceremony here at City Hall will be on Jan Friday, January the 18th at 4.30 and the public is more than welcome to participate with the employees. Um, January the 18th and 19th, uh, tip a cop at the uh, Longhorn Steakhouse for good cause for uh, Special Olympics. I um, want to thank the chief and his officers for continuing to support that and all the money that they raised for that organization. On January the 20th, um, Sing for King at the First Baptist Church of Laurel at 7 p.m. City is one of the sponsors with that. It's a great program. If you have never been there, I encourage you to try to attend. Uh, the First Baptist Church, is, as we know, is now located mm -hmm. off of um, Cherry Lane. And the city's annual open house, uh, giving everybody a head start, will be on uh, March the 3rd. want to thank uh, and acknowledge Public Works uh, as well because at Fairlawn and Carroll Avenue, for those that may not know, there's stormwater drain um, work going on as well as some paving, and I know that's almost complete. Or, or complete. And I want to thank uh, Paul and his crews for that and working with that to get that achieved. And um, let me just say there's... Um, I want to remind everyone as the new year approaches, um, our police department is very busy um, as well as many of our city staff, um, but the police department in particular, uh, they cannot do it alone. It requires uh, the general public to be involved, to be engaged. When you see something that doesn't look right, I encourage you to call our police department. If it's not the local police department, call our uh, county police or wherever you may be. Um, it is important for that um, our police department be involved and the community be engaged. That's the only way um, that we're going to continue to um, uh, have good crime prevention and and make sure that we uh, put the uh, bad guys behind bars so I encourage you to do that the um, just I have uh, every year this time I have some comments and goals that we're going to do and I'm going to run over those real quick I know we have a lot of business was present um, last thing I do want to acknowledge so I don't have to um, stop you uh, I will uh, recuse myself from item 15 which is the introduction to public hearing on ordinance 1763 the revitalization overlay application as I've said at the work session I'm a uh, employee of the Maryland Transit Administration this involves uh, Maryland Transit and others and I will remove myself from the chambers um, with that said let me just move real quickly I um, want to get in as you heard happy new year to all and hope everyone had a uh, and their families had a happy and safe holiday season uh, each year we try to set some goals. This year is no different, and I want to make uh, the residents and the business community aware of some of the things that we're planning in the upcoming year. This is just a small list. One of the things we're going to do is to kick off our One Neighborhood Program, which uh, entails a citywide community outreach. Our citywide, it will entail uh, each department to uh, review uh, policies and procedures top to bottom. It will require um, more interaction uh, with our community. It will require training of our employees as well as citizens. And it will involve us getting the youth more involved in the community. So look for more details as we move forward with that. We're going to continue as well with our Laurels Talking Program. That's where we continue to have our departments give updates on cable. If you hear a sigh, that's usually them sighing over there. They hate that. I know that. But it's a good way to um, open up to the community, be involved, and really tell the, the departments do a whole lot, and it really doesn't get out to the community. We want to make sure that that continues. Uh, we're going to continue to work on our citywide newsletter for our businesses and residents and, and try to um, add a few other newsletters as we move forward. We'll continue with our city hall and the park and our my time with the mayor community meetings. We'll work on efforts to increase our employee wellness and our education programs, uh, as well as working with the entire Laurel community. Uh, we will continue to increase our efforts on economic development along the Route 1 corridor and the city center location. Um, that has been very challenging the last few years, but we think that things are starting to move forward. Um, we will, um, the administration will work with the city council to review and update our citizens advisory committees and commissions if needed. And our uh, police chief and his officers will continue to work um, with the gun turn-in program and educational programs uh, throughout the city. We'll review our city employee salary and benefits for employees and adjust where needed. 
and uh, we will review the City of Laurel's retirement and pension program. Uh, we will continue to update the city's grant program for economic development and uh, we'll help to br hopefully will help to bring new business into the city of Laurel and we'll support our local schools through meetings uh, meetings with the principals adopt the school programs and kids reading to the kids we'll work on an incentive program to retain uh, our current businesses it's just important as we bring new business in to make sure that uh, we retain that that um, our older businesses in the city of Laurel. They've done much for this community. We wanna make sure that we come up with an incentive program either to uh, help them expand or do storefronts and those types of things and, and um, look forward to working with the council on that challenge. Last, we'll continue our efforts um, to engage our youth um, without, uh, throughout the community. That's very important. We have a very diverse community and our, we're gonna do that through many of our departments, but we rely heavily on our Park and Recs Division. Um, and um, Mike has, uh, has many good programs out there, but there's always room for improvements. This is just a few of the highlights um, uh, of what I know we can achieve. Let me end by just saying that I strongly believe in teamwork, teamwork among our employees, our citizens, and our other elected officials. No one person can do it alone. It's not uh, them against us. It's not me against you. It's about working together to get these things uh, for the community done. Uh, my only agenda this year and in years past will be what's best for the city of Laurel. The Marin City Council will work um, to ensure that everyone is treated with respect regardless of their position and opinions. Working together, we can make a difference in our community. And Mr. President, we look forward to the administration, look forward to working with you and the council and uh, moving these goals as well as many others that you all have established. And uh, you all have been a great partner. We appreciate that. And uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, we'll move to agenda item number seven, general public hearing. I'll open the general public hearing at uh, 7.32. Ms. Rowe. Thank you. Okay, I have no one signed up to speak at the general public hearing. Is there anyone wishing to speak at the general public hearing? <coughs> Seeing no one, I'll close the general public hearing at 732. Move to agenda item number eight. Consideration of recommendation for a water upgrade at the Parks and Recreation Maintenance Facility. Mr. Lotsky, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. President, members of the council, mayor. Uh, as discussed at the last work session, you should have a memorandum dated January 9, 2013 in front of you titled Water Upgrade Maintenance Facility Revised. The City of Laurel would like to upgrade the water service to the Parks and Recreation Maintenance Facility located at 7705 Old Sandy Spring Road to include the new storage building behind that facility. The upgrade will enable us to install a full fire sprinkler system to both buildings. The existing water service is not large enough per WSSC standards. Working with our engineers at KCI, we were able to come up with uh, plans that were approved by WSSC for this. We have contacted three WSSC um, contractors or approved contractors to, to uh, provide proposals for the upgrade. The scope of work includes tapping into the 24 inch main on Old Sandy Spring Road and running four inch water service to each of the uh, buildings. Uh, we will then hire a qualified uh, plumber to do, do the final hookup. Um, the information before you, um, we had the three contractors again, they are as follows, HTI contractors out of F uh, Finksburg, Maryland at $74,700. City contractors out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland at $78,950 and Joseph Canova and Sons out of Laurel, Maryland for $85,755. Uh, we discussed funding was available in the CIP, current CIP um, under the uh, project titled Parks and Recreation Maintenance Facility. And at this time, I'd like to recommend that uh, after review that the Mayor and City Council accept the proposal supplied by HTI contractors for $74,700. Thank you, Mr. Lotsky. This was discussed at the work session on January 10th. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. President, I so move. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. Do I have a second? 
second. Thank you, Ms. Curry. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, Ms. Rowe. Mr. Ricks? Aye. Ms. Query? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. President Laz? Yes. Let me just clarify, Mr. Lotsky. You said city contractors, correct? No. I think that's, uh, yeah. You should have the revised version of the memo dated January 9th. No, we don't. And that's what was discussed at the uh, work session. Okay, I just want to make sure. The one that was discussed at the work session was January 9th listing uh, HTI contractors as the low bidder. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, okay. sir. And that's what we've, uh, we've approved. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Moved to agenda item number nine, second public hearing with possible action on charter resolution number 161. A resolution to amend section 524 of the charter of the city of Laurel entitled purchases and contracts to raise the amount of contracts that may be approved by the administration without action of the city council and to amend the process for the approval of purchases and contracts for services which are part of the adopted and approved city budget or capital improvement program. I've read the title into the record for the second reading. I'll open the public hearing at 736. I have no one signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 736. What's the pleasure of the council? Mr. President. Mr. Ricks. I move for adoption of charter resolution number 161. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you, Ms. Nicholas. Any further discussion? Call the roll, Ms. Rowe. Mr. Ricks? I vote aye, and I'd like to also bring to the attention of the public that this council has um, taken the position that where certain bids come in at a very close um, dollar figure, that we can award outside of just the general best bid to a particular business in the city of Laurel, giving the business in the city of Laurel the credit for being here and paying taxes. So I, I vote aye, and I look forward to seeing this be an integral part of our new community. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. Ms. Crary? Yes. <coughs> President Les? Yes. Mr. Mayor. I'm behind you. Mayor Mel. I concur. Thank you. Move to agenda agenda item number 10. Second public hearing with possible action on <coughs> resolution number 16-12. A resolution to designate a tax increment <coughs> financing district and create a special fund for the town center at Laurel. I read the title into the record for the second reading. I'll open the public hearing at 738. And I will first call Kim to come forward and state your name and address for the record, and you have the floor. Hi, I'm Kim Potember, uh, Greenberg Gibbons. We're the developer of Town Center at Laurel. Um, Is the microphone on there, Kim? Make it's green. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Address is 10096 Red Run Boulevard, Owings Mills, Maryland. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, give you a quick update on the project. You've all seen, I think, the demolition is progressing very quickly. We anticipate having it completed by the end of February with the exception of Burlington Coat Factory, which will occur in May when they vacate. We're getting ready to uh, start site work immediately um, upon the completion of the demolition, so March. Um, it's very important that we get the tax increment financing. Uh, in order to start our site work, we need to uh, have our financing in place, and that's one of the requirements of our lenders. So um, it is very important to us. Um, our leasing is going well at the center as well. We're close to signing leases with all of the major anchor tenants. Um, and I just wanted to thank you all for your support and uh, 
hope we have your continued support. Thank you, Kim. Thanks. Also have Alan uh, signed up to speak if necessary. Alan, if you state your name and address for the record, and you're, you're addressing both 10 and 11. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Good, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, members of council. My name is Alan Kaysen with the law firm of McGuire Woods, 7 St. Paul, Baltimore. Um, I'm here uh, today as the uh, bond counsel for the developer, um, and I've been working closely with um, Mr. Dory and Miles and Stockbridge. Um, as you know, this is sort of a, a, a double-barreled uh, bond program with the, with the city's tax increment and also uh, the participation of Prince George's County. And I just wanted to briefly report on that piece of it. Um, uh, we have been uh, working with, with, with Prince George's County. Um, the, uh, we are working on what's called a pilot arrangement, a payment in lieu of taxes, which um, is coming along as a result of a new law that was adopted in last year's General Assembly. It's uh, House Bill 988, which is uh, going to be part of the tax property article of the Maryland Annotative Code. And it allows the county to enter into pilot arrangements for, for items other than just affordable housing projects. And so we've been working with the county uh, closely over the last several months. Um, it is a new law, and as you know, the implementation of new laws take a little bit of time. So we're in the process of working out the form of their legislation and the form of their pilot agreement and we hope to have that far along so that the county is comfortable in releasing that and what we intend to do is to deliver that to uh, Laurel and, and Mr. Dory to make sure that you all feel that it's consistent with the legislation that you're considering today but I just wanted to report that that process is ongoing um, sort of on a parallel track and we're looking forward to sort of bringing it all together for a successful financing. Thank you, Alan. Mr. Dory, did you want to say a few words? State your name and address for the record, sir. My name is Robert Dory. I'm with Miles and Stockbridge, uh, 10 Light Street, Baltimore, Maryland. We're the city's bond council. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I just wanted to get up and uh, clarify once again that this is a proposed tax increment financing which means that the bonds which will be issued will be payable only from the increase in property taxes which occurs as a result of the redevelopment of this property uh, <clears throat> and also from the pilot revenues that Mr. Kaysen was talking about uh, and the legislation also limits it uh, limits the use of the even that tax increment to 70% of the tax increment so the city will receive 30% of any increase in property taxes attributable to the development plus will continue to receive the existing property taxes which they receive at at this time uh, if there is any uh, issue or problem uh, that comes up in terms of the development the people who are taking the financial risk are the people who buy the bonds. They're the ones who understand that. And uh, the city is not in any way obligated to put its full faith and credit or to pay these bonds from any other revenues of the city. Thank you, Mr. Dory. Mayor. Bob, also, we want to state that this is uh, not to build them all. This is for public infrastructure only. That is, that is exactly right, Mr. Mayor. That was on my list, and I forgot it. Okay. So, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else wishing to speak on this agenda item? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 744. What's the pleasure of the council? Mr. President. Ms. Crary. I recommend that we approve resolution number 16-12, the resolution concerning town center at Laurel Mall, at, at Laurel rather, tax Second. increment financing district. Second. And let me just uh, friendly amendment and create a special fund for the town center at Laurel, correct? I want to make sure. Right. Thank you. You have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, Ms. Rao. 
Ms. Crary? Yes. Mr. Ricks? Yes. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. President Laz? Yes. Mayor Mel. Well, I want to thank Mr. Manzi as well as Bob Dory, our bond council, and members of the council for moving this along, and uh, I'll concur. Thank you, Mayor. Move to agenda item number 11, second public hearing with possible action on ordinance number 1762, an ordinance to authorize the city to issue up to $15,500,000 of tax increment financing special obligation bonds for the town center at Laurel. I've read the title of the record for the second reading. I'll open the public hearing at 745. I have no one else signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 745. What's the pleasure of the council? Mr. President. Ms. Curry. I recommend that we approve ordinance number 1762 and ordinance concerning town center at Laurel. Tax increment financing special obligation bonds. Second. Again, a friendly amendment in the amount of $15,500,000. Thank you. Any further discussion? Call the roll, Ms. Rowe. Ms. Crary? Yes. Mr. Ricks? Aye. Ms. Nicholas? Yes. President Laz? Yes. Mayor Mel? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Move to agenda item number 12, introduction and first public hearing on charter resolution number 160, a resolution to amend the charter of the city of Laurel by adding new language to section 353 of the charter entitled general powers to provide that the mayor by executive order create necessary or beneficial policies for the op operation of the city government so long as such policies comply with the city charter and city code as amended from time to time. I've read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 747. I have uh, Mr. McSini signed up to speak. You state your name and address for the record, Mr. McSini. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is James McSini. I reside at 400 Main Street in Laurel. Uh, and I think this is, uh, I'm happy to see this resolution. I'm surprised that the mayor doesn't have you know, authority like this already. Uh, but I do have two suggestions that I would like uh, to be incorporated into the, uh, uh, into the resolution. Uh, one of them, uh, the first one is uh, in line seven of the first major paragraph that says the mayor shall have powers um, that, <clears throat> that says that no such executive order shall violate any per, any portion of the city charter or city or city code and i think it would be appropriate to, to say nor be inconsistent with any action of the of the mayor and city council and the second item which is uh concerning the uh, this next paragraph where it says that the uh, uh an ex executive orders may be overridden by the city council by a supermajority vote of the city council at any regular mayor and city council meetings meeting held within 30 days of the executive order issued and i'd like to suggest that the words held within 30 days be deleted uh, because none of us have the power to see what is coming down the road next week next month or next year and while the a policy when it is adopted in February of 2013, circumstances may arise in March of 2015 uh, that might cause the city council uh, to might overrule or uh, withdraw the the, uh, the policy. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. McSee, do you have those in writing? Give them to Mr. Yes, Manzi, sure and uh, or give them to Ms. Rowe, and we'll make sure we the council members get a copy of that. Okay. Thank sure. you, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, since, since I have the floor, um, I'd like to make one other statement that's unrelated to the business uh, here today, but uh, 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 my wife and I had an occasion uh, last Friday to have to visit the uh, uh, Laurel Regional Hospital emergency room, uh, and I'm very, very happy to, to report that uh, subsequent to the visit that I made there, in 06 and my wife made there in 08 uh, it's the difference between night and day and the University of Maryland 
medical people there and the rest of the staff. Uh, 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 it was a terrific uh, visit and uh, I, would, I would certainly recommend that people who heretofore have looked to go to other places try the emergency room, the local emergency room. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McSaney. We'll pass that along to uh, the staff and the president. Has anyone else si signed up to speak on this agenda item? Is there anyone else wishing to speak? <coughs> Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 7.50. Second public hearing with possible action is scheduled for Monday, January 28, 2013 at 7 p.m. Move to agenda item number 13, introduction and first public hearing on ordinance number 1756, text amendment number 228, an ordinance to amend chapter 20, land development subdivision, article one, zoning, division two, administration and enforcement of the Laurel City Code providing an effective date. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 751. I have no one signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing at 7.51. Second public hearing with possible action is scheduled for Monday, January 28, 2013 at 7 p.m. Move to agenda item number 14, introduction of first public hearing on resolution one, number 1-13, a resolution to amend resolution number 2-01 to change the composition of the membership of the Laurel Youth Advisory Council and to make certain technical and organizational changes to the text of the resolution. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at uh, 7.52. I have no one signed up to speak on this agenda item. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 7.52. <coughs> the second public hearing with possible action is scheduled for Monday, January 28, 2013 at 7 p.m. Move to agenda item number 15, introduction and first public hearing on ordinance number 1763, revitalization overlay application number R03-1-2012 approving, approving a conceptual plan overlay plan for 100 Main Street Mark train station project. I read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 752. And I have uh, Bill Ship signed up to speak. Bill, if you state your name and address for the record, sir, and you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. For the record, my name is Bill Ship. I'm with O'Malley, Miles, Nyland, and Gilmore in Calverton, just down the road. Here tonight on behalf of the applicant, uh, we want to thank you for putting this on your agenda and, and getting us to introduction, hopefully, so that we can get this project moving forward. Uh, we have been working very closely with your staff on issues uh, related to this conceptual plan. Uh, um, most recently specifically related to issues uh, concerning circulation and traffic with the relocation of the parking. Uh, we will continue to work through those issues as we go further and further into the process. This is just the conceptual overlay plan. I believe you saw this PowerPoint last week. So I was going to suggest that we're not going to run through it again, right. but we do have uh, our full team here. Of course, I have the applicant representatives from Baldwin LLC and Patriot Realty, Leif Wayne and Jerry Ricciardi. I do have, or we have with us, uh, our colleagues from MDOT tonight, Dell Adams and Namisha Sharmi. Uh, and our traffic consultant, Wes Guckert, is here. And our architect planner representative, Lee Driscoll, are all here as resources for you if you have questions, and, and certainly I'm not, if the folks from MDOT want to speak, I'm not uh, controlling what they may want to say or not. Uh, but we are here as a resource. We're happy to move forward uh, with the project. And rather than take much more time on your agenda, we would just simply say we're here to answer any questions you might have. And we're anxious, I believe tomorrow night, we're going to your planning commission and we will continue uh, through the process. If you had any suggestions or questions you want us to take to that meeting, we're, we're glad to be here and hear them. 
Tomorrow night you'll be making a full presentation to the Planning Commission, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so um, uh, we appreciate the uh, presentation you made at the work session. Uh, and we look forward to uh, final development of this project. Uh, it's been a long time coming. And um, I'm sure that, uh, that it will enhance the livability of the... Uh, of the Main Street quarter down to the train station, and we need to maintain the uh, visibility of that train station. We appreciate the uh, suggestion for uh, uplighting of the station so it can be seen from uh, Route 1. Uh, are there any questions? Excuse <coughs> me. The other night when we had your presentation, for some reason, I, I forgot to write down the total number of, of units we were talking about for the development. It's 310 residential units. And 310? Is, yes, and there is a... Is that retail, including the commercial? No, the retail commercial is another 10,000 10, square feet, first floor activity. So subject to one store, three stores? Would right, it could be cut up in a number of different ways. Could be retail, could be restaurants, and, and I believe there was also some suggestion that some of the units might be um, considered for office, but... All of that will come out as we, we go through the process and get input from various are, stakeholders. Are, are, I'm sorry. Are the units, are the units um, all one bedroom, two bedroom? There will be a mix of units. A mix. Yes. No, but it hasn't been broken down yet? Let me see if uh, Jerry Rashardi from uh, the owner is going to come up, or the applicant is going to come up. Thank you, Mr. President, for the... Uh, uh, yes, my name is uh, Jerry Rashardi. I work with Peter <coughs> Realty, and uh, there'll be a mix of studios, one bedrooms, and two bedroom Correct. units throughout the building. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Uh, let me. Uh, does M. Dot want to say anything tonight? Do you just want to be present? Just state your name and address for the record, sir. <coughs> Bill Adams, 7306 Cary Hill Court, Columbia, Maryland. Um, just here representing um, the state and uh, adding our support. We've been working on this project for quite some time. Um, we think we have the winning developer to pull this thing off. It's a difficult site. We've been working on it for several years now, and uh, I can see us coming to the finish line. So we're excited about it and, and look forward to your continued support. Thank you very much. I just will mention for those who didn't ha see the presentation, uh, uh, at the uh, work session, but it will also be at the Planning Commission tomorrow night. The uh, parking lot next to Danimans will in fact end up as a structured parking garage. Um, so there will be an increased uh, uh, provision for parking on that side of the station. All right, thank you gentlemen. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this agenda item? Mr. Klacoon, state your name and address for the record, sir. Rob Klacoon, 101 Main Street. Uh, I'd just like to uh, see if there can be some consideration towards the, uh, the street and the access for large trucks, especially uh, uh, tractor trailers going up 1st Street. There's a... Uh, major problem there now where um, tractor trailers come down the main street they can't get underneath the low pass on the bridge and they either back, have to back up into route one or they have to cut the turn up first street and uh, they've knocked over a couple of the street lights they've uh, moved a couple of the large planters um, they run over the curb stops all the time and so if you know if this can project could have some consideration to either uh, make access for truck traffic to uh, get turned around somehow or uh, exit out of one of the other areas. Uh, I don't believe you're going to do anything with the overpass, but maybe... Uh, Not in our lifetime. Yeah, maybe make uh, First Street a little wider. Well, maybe the answer is to prohibit uh, tractor trails from turning down that part of uh, Main Street. 
Mr. Well, President. A lot of them have GPS that send them down that way. I, I understand that, but uh, maybe that's the uh, the answer. I mean, I don't, uh, I mean, we'll go ahead and uh, pass that along to uh, uh, to Carl and to Paul. That would be my uh, only consideration with the project. Uh, thank you, Mr. Make sure Mr. It's President. It's not uh, jammed in and, and the street's not. I understand. Mr. Ricks. Uh, I would recommend that um, we refer this to the Public Safety Committee for review, and we'll see what we can come up with. All right. Okay, Mr. Clacoon. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this agenda? Item? <clears throat> Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at uh, 8 p.m. <coughs> Second public hearing with possible action scheduled for Monday, January 28th, 2013 at 7 p.m. Move to agenda item number 16. Introduction first public hearing on ordinance number 1764, an ordinance approving an MXT conceptual site plan number 830. I've read the title into the record for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 8.01. Uh, let's see, I have uh, Ed Gibbs signed up to speak. State your name and address for the record, Mr. Gibbs. Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. President and uh, members of the council. Edward Gibbs, an attorney with offices at 1300 Caraway Court uh, in Largo. And I'm here this evening uh, representing Strip Matter Land, Limited Liability Company, and Mill Creek Residential Trust. And, uh, and I would like, I don't know whether we have any, anything we're going to display the conception That's fine. Um, you know, we're going to be making a, obviously there was a work session last week and all that information was presented at that time. Um, I have um, Mr. Rob Strip Matter of Strip Matter Land with me this evening, as well as Chad Debro DeVoe of uh, Mill Creek. Um, we will, of course, be before the Planning Commission uh, tomorrow evening with a more extensive presentation. But suffice it to say that uh, this conceptual site plan, uh, I think, uh, represents the opportunity to bring forth a, an exciting mixed use project uh, to the city, which uh, will include um, a residential component, uh, a hotel and uh, commercial retail space um, at the intersection of Interstate 95 and, and the new Conti Road interchange. Um, we have submitted uh, justification statements uh, relative to the conceptual site plan. We certainly will incorporate those into our presentation tomorrow evening. And uh, we, of course, uh, have worked with your staff um, for quite some time relative to this project. Uh, I'll be happy to respond to any questions you might have and appreciate your favorable consideration to uh, introduce the, uh, the order. Thank you, Ed. Any questions of Ed? Thank you, Ed. Okay, we read the title of the record. Uh, and I'll close the public hearing at 8.03. The second public hearing with possible action is scheduled for Monday, January 28, 2013 at 7 p.m. The other part of this action is the introduction and first public hearing on ordinance number 16, 1765, map amendment application number 829 to rezone property from the PI zone to the MXT zone for west side development. I've read the title of the record for the public uh, for the first reading. I'll open the public hearing at 803. Ed? very much. Uh, once again, good evening, Mr. President and uh, members of the Council, and Mr. Mayor. Uh, nice to see everyone. Uh, once again, um, I'm here on behalf of uh, Strip Matter Land relative to this application to rezone a little more 19.89 acres, I believe it is, from the PI zone to the MXT zone. Um, we have uh, submitted uh, a very lengthy analysis as part of our application. Uh, we believe this application conforms to all of the uh, purposes of the MXT zone and will represent a compatible uh, mixed-use development uh, for the city. This property will be combined with the Strip Matter property. It's currently titled in the name of the State Highway Administration and uh, Strip Matters as part of their um, 
their overarching settlement agreement with the state will uh, soon become the owners of this property. The state signed the application as consented to the, uh, the uh, rezoning going forward. Uh, and once again, we will uh, we'll have a, a more elaborate presentation uh, forthcoming. And I know we'll be before you again on uh, January 28th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have no one else signed up to speak on this agenda item? Is there anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing at 8.05. The second public hearing with possible action is scheduled for Monday, January 28, 2013 at 7 p.m. Is there anything else to come before the council? Meeting's adjourned. Bye. I need to see you in